So what is the price elasticity of the man? The price elasticity of the man is a measure of how much quantity demanded of a good response to change in price of that good. And we know by the law of demand that as the price goes up, the quantity demanded for that good should fall. So therefore, as there's going to be, in, let's say, a percentage increase in the price, there's going to be a percentage fall in the quantity demanded. All that's going to mean here is that this, by calculation, will be negative. Um, but <clears throat> if we deal with something else, then by calculation, uh, by convention later on, we'll, we'll see that we could treat it as the, the positive equivalent. However, right now, let's just kind of discuss a little bit what I mean by elasticity of demand. So what's the main purpose of calculating the elasticity of demand? Well, what we're looking for here is to try to determine, as was mentioned here, res responsiveness. Okay? We want to see uh, whether you change the price of a good, whether it's going to impact demand a lot or not much. So if you put yourself into a context of uh, you're running um, a heli ski operation, okay? So example, heli ski. And over the this operation, you're asking yourself, well, we're making money, but I, I wish we could be making more. Uh, the cost of fuel and other things like that have gone up. So let's consider putting on up our prices. So let's say in the past, the prices have been 10,000 for a week. And all of a sudden, we're thinking, well, what would happen if we were to offer the same service now at 11,000? Okay, well, that's a really bad 11,000. Let's just try this again. At 11,000. Okay. Well, what's going on here? We want to see how much our clients have changed over this course of this time. So if we have 10,000 going to 11,000, uh, that's roughly a 10% increase. We'll see how different it's going to be. But let's say over the same time, we used to have, um, let's say, 1,000 customers a year. This is my customers. And due to this increase in price, all of a sudden, we see that we only have 750 that are still willing to pay. Well, in this situation here, if you were to calculate your total revenues, just multiplying your revenue per customer times your amount of customers, well, over here, we would notice that here we would have 10 million. And over here, we would have 11 times 750. So it'd be something like 8.25 million if my calculation is right. Okay. So essentially we've seen that we've put up our prices, but our total revenues are down. Okay. We, we can't uh, say whether this is a good or bad decision because here we're abstracting completely from the cost component. And something that you have to be clear about when dealing with elasticity is that we're only looking at total revenue. We're only looking at what's happening to revenues in this situation here. And it's going to be kind of our main goal to see how we can maximize total revenue by using elasticity to our advantage. Uh, but in this case here, we could see that we've had a small increase in price, roughly, and I'll say why, roughly 10% in a second. And for this small increase in price, We've had a drop of roughly, once again, 25% customers. Well, because the drop's been greater than the increase in price, we could see that there's been a decrease in total revenue. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> let's go through one of these calculations. All right, so this is a very simple example where you're actually given percentage change in quantity demand, the percentage change in price, and you have to calculate it. And as mentioned here, uh, theoretically, this by the law of demand, this price elasticity of demand, which is referred to by this uh, kind of weird end sign, eta, 
It's always negative because of the law of demand, but conventionally economists tend to take the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand and always record it as positive. If you keep it as negative, it's not a big deal. But beware, this is the only elasticity of demand that we take the absolute value, that we change the sign of the result that we obtain. It is very important that when we deal with uh, cross price elasticity of demand and income elasticity of demand, that we do not take the absolute value and that the sign is crucial. Okay. Uh, so how should we calculate the percentage change in prices or quantities? Well, the percentage change in prices or quantities is actually different than what people would normally say. When I typically ask this question in class, if I go from the previous example from 10,000 to 11,000 and I were to ask the percentage change in price, a lot of people would say, well, it's simply 11,000 minus 10,000 over 10,000, which gives them 10%. And essentially what they're doing there is they're looking at the new price minus the old price divided by the old. But if I look at this and I look at the formula I have here, I can see that these are not the same. Uh, here, when we're dealing with the price of new minus the price of original over the average product, so the top part's the same. This is the same as this. It's just here we use the average price. So in this context here, we would have to do 10,000, uh, sorry, 11,000 minus 10,000 over the average of the two. I know that that's 10,500, but if you're not sure, just take the price of one minus the price of the other, or plus actually, and take this whole amount divided by two, and you will notice that that's 10,500. What does this amount give? It's gonna be something a little bit smaller than 10%, so if I calculate it out, um, it gives me nine point five two percent. Okay, so we have this situation slightly different than that. And this is different. Why are we using the average? Why is it important to use average? Well, the main reason why we use the average is if I flip over here to a whiteboard, is I notice that from a demand curve, so this is my price, this is my quantity, and this is my typical demand curve. So here I could have a price of 10,000. And I had a demand of a thousand, and now I have 750 people that are interested at 11,000. Well, what I'm looking for here is how steep or flat is this curve? How responsive is it? Because if I were to have a situation such as a demand curve that's very steep versus a demand curve that is very flat. I can notice that a very flat demand curve, let's say this is my 10,000 example, and this is 11,000, I could see that my quantity demanded has fallen dramatically. Whereas over here, I could kind of assume that it doesn't change all that much. There's a big difference whether you're dealing with this, whether you're dealing with this, or with th this one here, when you're determining the decision, should I increase the price or should I not increase the price? And this big distinction comes from how people respond to a change in price. So here I have a mild response, here I have a very large response, 
and here I have an extremely mild or almost no response. So if I were thinking about increasing the price and I wanted to have the least impact possible on my customers, what I would hope to be in, which situation I would hope to be in, is which? Is it here, here, or here? Well, if your guess is that this is the ideal situation, if you're thinking of increasing the price, you're right. Because in this situation, I could potentially increase my prices by roughly 10%, and the customers would not necessarily stop coming therefore I simply raise my revenues by a certain amount have the same amount of customers my costs are roughly the same and I'm making more profits if I'm in this situation here I might quickly realize that I have increased my price but I've lost so many customers that <clears throat> it's no longer profitable for me to run a business and here I have the intermediate situation okay so to come back to why in that calculation I use average and not uh, old is for this simple reason. I want to calculate the responsiveness between these two points. Call it point A and point B. By using average, it doesn't matter whether I consider my point A to be my new price and my new quantity or point B to be my new price and my new quantity it doesn't really matter it's either one or the other therefore I'm calculating the elasticity or the responsiveness between these two points and sometimes if you're out there and you're about to market a product and you're thinking okay should I market this new revolutionary luggage system at a hundred dollars or a hundred twenty five dollars well when you're asking yourself that this question between a hundred and a hundred twenty five you haven't chosen one of the two prices right yet so you cannot assign which one's the new price and which one's the old price you're looking at the responsiveness between the two and we'll notice later on that if the responsiveness is very high, well, maybe you want to target a lower price and just increase your sales by that much more. Okay. All right, so back to the slides. Okay. All right, so let's try to go through one example. Okay, let's clear this. All right, so in this situation here, I have given you original and new, but for sake of argument here, I would suggest you to do the same thing here and ask yourself, what would happen if this was new and this was original? Or you could consider one as point A, the other one as point B, or point B and point A. Okay. So here, what would be the price last to see the man? Well, I'll remember that this is the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price okay for the people that don't know this little triangle sign represents change in okay. so quantity demanded percentage change in quantity demanded as I said it doesn't really matter which one I use as my new and my original but for future purposes when we're going to be dealing with the other elasticities you always need to keep the same one I can't say this is my original or my new for price and then this is my original my new and the it's the opposite for quantity it has to be the same so I'm gonna take it as is for this example here and if you try the opposite here just switch it around so here my new price is 80 minus my old price original price is 100 and this I have to divide by the average the average of the two is 80 plus 100 divided by 2, and I know this to be 90. This is going to give me my amount for my percentage change in quantity demanded. Just needs a little calculator to calculate that, or it's uh, minus 2 ninths, because it's minus 20 over 90. And if I think of my percentage change in price, again, I have to use the same new, so 20 minus 15 
over the average, which is 17.5. And this is going to give me 5 over 17.5 or 10 over 35 or something else like that. And so 5 over 17.5. I'm going to calculate this in a sec. It's normal here that here we have negative and here we don't. As I mentioned, when you put one over the other, one all should always be negative, the other one positive, and this very specific elasticity where we're dealing with the price elasticity of demand and the law of demand. So what does this give me? Uh, two nights, it's 0.22, it just keeps on going. And 5 over 17.5 is 0.28. Okay. So quickly here we can notice that the percentage change in price is greater than the percentage change in quantity demanded. So the, the demand is a little less reactive. Let's see how this pans out. So I got my 0.22 over my 0.28. And here if you ideally you keep as many decimals as possible. But in this very specific situation, if you keep only two, it's not the end of the world. And here this should have a negative sign. I forgot it, that's very important. So this is minus 0.79, but as I mentioned before, we could take the absolute value and just treat it as 0.79. Okay. The next lesson is going to be about not only calculating elasticity of demand, but what's the meaning behind this 0.79? What will it represent as a good or bad for us? Thank you.